Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in Nextian Display series. Today I will cover the remaining features in the Nextian Display, and that would be, sending numbers, sending floats, hotspots, and finally the QR code. So let's start by creating the project in Nextian Editor. Give some name to this file, and select the display type. I will use the vertical orientation today. Let's add one more page to make it more interesting. We will add the hotspot first. And I am going to turn the entire display into a hotspot, so basically I can touch anywhere on this display. And what happens when we touch this hotspot? Well we will make it send its ID. Let's test this quickly. As you can see it's sending 01, when we touch it. We will make use of it, when we write the program. Let's go to page 1, and add one more hotspot here. Now we can't make it send its ID again, or else we won't be able to differentiate which one of them is sending the value 1. So we will make it send 0 2. Let's test it too. This is that first page, and it's sending a 1. By the way, to change the page, just type page, and space followed by the page number. And we are on page 1 now. As you can see it's sending 2, followed by some zeros. But we will program the microcontroller to receive only one byte from the UART, so we will be getting two from this page. This completes the hotspot setup. Now on the page zero, I am going to add the blocks for the number, and the float. We need to add some fonts also. I have already created them in my previous videos. But anyway you can create the fonts from here. Now you can see the default values that is zero. The number value is assigned 32-bit integer, and you can see the limit for the values. You can also change the format to other than decimal values. Now about the float values. As you can see here, the value is again a 32-bit signed integer. This means we can't directly write the float values into the display but we need to send the integer value instead. This parameter, vvs1, decides the position of the decimal point. If I change this to 2, see the decimal point has been shifted to 2 places. And yes, this is the key to write the float values. Let's test these. First I will write the number, and you can see it's being displayed. Now let's write to the float. As you can see, it's displaying with two decimal places. And if I change the values of the VVS1, the decimal place shifts respectively. I hope you understood how these things are going to work. Now let's go to page 1, and add the QR code. Here we have the text field, which the QR code will respond to. And this is the maximum length of the characters, let's increase it to 50. Now remember one very important thing. As you see on the right, some fields are green, and the rest are black. 
The green fields are the ones, whose values can be modified during the runtime. But the black fields should be fixed before loading the code into the display. This means that we can't modify this length field, once it is set. But we can modify the text anytime. So this is it, now let's upload this to our display. I am using UART to do the uploading. It's finished successfully. Now let's go to the cube IDE and create a new project. I will be using F446RE. Give some name to this and click finish. In the cube MX, first of all I am setting the crystal for the clock. Here I have 8 MHz crystal, and I want the controller to run at 180 MHz. I am going to use UART4 to transfer data to the Nextian. Set the board rate at 9600. Let's enable the UART interrupt also. This is because we will be receiving data from the Nextian display, and it's better to receive it in the interrupt mode. Click save to generate the project. Let's start writing the program now. Let's create a function to send the number to the display. The parameters are the object name, and a 32-bit signed integer, that you want to send. Create a buffer to store the string that we will send. Now sprintf will copy the data into the buffer. We will be sending the value field. The value field is the value of the number, and the object name is n0, for this number block. And now we will use the whole UART transmit to send the buffer to the display. These end commands will be sent after every data, to indicate the end of data transfer. So send the end commands to indicate the end of transfer. And finally free the memory from the buffer. Similarly, this is the function to send the float to the display. Here, as you can see, the float also accepts the 32-bit integer as the value. And VVS1 sets the decimal places. We will make certain changes in this function, so that this function can take the float value as the parameter. But of course, you have to specify the decimal places you need in that value. Here first of all we will convert the float to the integer by multiplying with 10 to the power the decimal places. Then we will send to the display, how many decimal places we need. This can be done by updating this VVS1 field. And we will send this buffer to the display. Now send the actual number, by using the same steps, but instead of VVS1, we will be sending the value field. Before going any further, let's test this much part first. We have a lot of warnings, because we haven't included the libraries. Here you can see, the IDE is asking us to include all these. We still have three warnings. This is because sprintf accepts the character array, so we can typecast it here. So we are good now. In the main function, let's send the number first. 
The object name is N0, and the value is 12345678. Similarly in the float function, the object name is X0, and input some float value. I am looking for three decimal places. Let's run it now. You can see the values are being displayed in their respective positions. The float value is not so accurate. As we are not taking any drastic measures for high accuracy, I will advise you to not use very high values in float. Keep your values in 7 digits, and it will work well. Now I am changing the decimal places to 2. And you can see it reflects on the display. So this part is fine. Let's write another function for the QR code. Here also, the parameter will be the object name, and the pointer to the string, that you want the QR code for. We will use the same format like the others. Here instead of value field, we have the text field. Now we need to receive data also. To do that we will use the interrupt, and once the data is received, the interrupt callback will be called. Let's define a variable to store the received data. Inside the callback function, we will first check if the data received is from the first hotspot, or from the second hotspot. If it is from the first hotspot, which is on page 0, we will send the command to go to the page 1. Now remember that we have to send the end commands also, to indicate the end of transfer. Similarly if the received data is from second hotspot, we will go to the page 0. Inside the main function, call the UART receive IT, and receive only one byte. Since this pregenerated code disables the interrupt after each execution, we need to put it in the callback function also, to manually enable it again. Ok let's check if the hotspots are working. As you can see, when I am touching the empty space, which is the hotspot, the pages are changing. So everything is fine till now. Now let's take it to the next level. Define some variables. We will update these variables inside the while loop and then send them to the display. This process will repeat every 500 milliseconds. Let's run it again. You can see the values are updating, but the float is updating really fast. Let's modify this a little more. In the callback function, I am resetting their values. Before the while loop begins, let's send some string to the QR also.
Now it is perfect. The hotspots are working well. The values are also resetting whenever we move between the pages. So I tried to test the QR code, and it's not working. After debugging a little more, I have found that we need to do some correction in our code. Let's see it. Right now we are on the page 0, and if we send the string to the QR, it is returning the error. So let's go to the page 1. And now send the string. You can see it's updated. So this means that, before sending the string to the QR, we need to be on the page, that have the QR. Also the string should be in the double quote. And before sending this string, we need to go to the page 1. Let's run it now. I am using my phone to scan the code. And you can see the string here. So the QR code works well. You can enter any string here, and it not necessarily needs to be a website. Just remember to go to the page, where the QR code is. This is basically it for the Nextian display. I will make one or two more videos about multiple page menu, or some fancy buttons, but this is it for the feature related videos. I have the basic model, and it only supports these features. If you want any other type of video on the Nextian, let me know in the comment section. I will try to cover it too. This is it for this video. I hope the things were clear. You can download the code from the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.